welcome back. We were discussing about the uh, space data protocol uh, and the modification of TCP for that. So, for that what we have uh, found out that in the space system the loss of packet can be due to many reasons, at least three reasons identified which is uh, corruption that is noise and the link outage and congestion. So, we were talking about the corruption induced loss and in that uh, said how uh, it is handled. First the onset of the corruption is to be identified which is identified by the link layer and uh, the link layer is uh, passed on the information to the higher layer that it says that it has a CRC error, but it can be demultiplexed, it can be still used. So, receiver runs a moving average and sets a threshold from that threshold, once it exceeds the threshold it says that corruption is experienced. So, it declares that uh, when the threshold is crossed and the receiver goes into the link corrupted state. So, it changes the state. So, link corrupted state the receiver starts sending corruption is experienced a, a separate type of message which is a, a internet control message uh, it sends to the destination mm, that I have experienced it sends the data and also it sends the corruption experienced. And the destination in response uh, uh, informs the source of the TCP that the link is corrupted. Uh, the acknowledgement is going along with that it says that I am uh, told that link is corrupted. Link is corrupted that is the important information for the uh, sender it does not go into the slow start mode as normal TCP assumes that this is a congestion. It knows that is corrupted. Mm. So, destination TCP mm, remain in the state for two times RTT unless the state changes the uh, change uh, state change message has come that it is not corrupted etcetera. Mm. So, that is the response destination TCP waits simply that there is a uh, there is a corruption a little bit of corruption it simply waits. And the response uh, sending TCP does not reduce the congestion window, it does not redu reduce the congestion window and does not back off its RTO or the RTO timeout back off which is normal TCP's uh, algorithm it does not do that. So, it does not uh, do the congestion control hmm, that is what is important it simply waits. And then when the acknowledgement is received without corruption experienced there is a very small corruption uh, was there after that uh, corruption experience is. Uh, uh, is uh, that information is not there in the acknowledgement then it is says that uh, the corruption state is come out. So, TCP starts working normally so that starts working normally on that. So, it is pictorially shown taken from a reference um, that is uh, as the link is corrupted in the uh, in the down link in this case the receiving ground station the local cache uh, they detect it and it along with the data. Uh, it says that there is a internet control uh, message packet that is corruption experienced a special message is sent and that is sent back along with the ACK uh, the, uh, the receiver that is the destination sending uh, to the source that uh, corruption is experienced experienced is the this is the additional uh, information which is going in the loss due to corruption. Let us see uh, other possibility link outage link outage is a transient phenomenon link outage is a transient phenomena for a short duration it may come um, when the satellite goes out of visibility of the station uh, due to any object uh, it comes under the shadow of object or because of any other reason uh, or some short term outage due to uh, loss of synchronization due to heavy rain etc i was just mentioning earlier um, there may be many reason so link outage is handled also in similar four phases as we discussed in uh, corruption case so, first is the identification and the physical layer again uh, can identify this link outage means no signal is coming. So, signal strength has gone below its threshold and synchronization is lost. So, uh, once that is done it sends a signal that is link outage message sent to the local host it is uh, not corruption experienced it is called link outage message a slightly different message is sent to the local host or the dis destination because link is out. So, in the for, uh, forward side to, towards the destination it can send that message and the response of that is a TCP source uh, enters in the persist mode and send occasional probe packet. Mm, it, it just uh, uh, 
uh, it just stop transmission, it, it just sends sometimes uh, after some time a uh, probing packet that link has come back or not. Mm. And it suspends all timers and sees uh, normal uh, retransmissions, etcetera, what is supposed to happen. It does not send anything, it does not transmit, uh, it does not retransmit, but only occasional packet, probe packet transmits. And when terminates, terminates that when link is restored, message is received from the physical layer. Uh, that uh, 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 this uh, phase is uh, terminated, that is the link outage phase. Mm. The link uh, restored uh, information is available from the uh, physical layer, that is modulator, demodulator will uh, get into sync and uh, that message can be sent to the higher layer. So, it can be pictorially uh, shown, that is uh, there is a, uh, a satellite has gone into the shadow of the receive station and uh, there is a there is a temporary link outage which is detected here because this signal is not coming and so there are uh, that special control message packets are sent uh, to the destination uh, that link is not there and so it cannot can do anything and the tcp source uh, goes uh, into persist mode it doesn't get act uh, so it it goes into persist mode and it occasionally send probe packet so when the probe packet is through then signal is again detected and then this will come out of the uh, destination and normal uh, thing is restored. So, it does not go into slow start mode that is that is very important because, because this is a transient phenomena the satellite is moving and it will go out of the shadow of this object and the link will be restored. Mm. So, so therefore, it does not go into the congestion avoid uh, congestion uh, experienced and slow start mode that is the link outage. But then in satellite network there also can be congestion mm, uh, like a normal network it is there when it exceeds the network capacity it is congestion. So, in that case also there are uh, there are uh, slight modification of the protocol we need not very go into very detail, but just briefly I will try to mention. In a space link uh, it is expensive to recover from the losses due to long delay and limited power that is important it has limited power and it's a long delay. So, therefore, it is it's quite expensive to recover. So, there is a variation of the normal standard TCP which is called TCP Vegas we need not go into very much detail of that sir. briefly I will mention of the in some of the important uh, characteristics of that the TCP Vegas variation of the slow start algorithm is used for in the space environment. Now, what it does that it doubles the CWD CWND every uh, second RTT, every alternate RTT instead of every RTT, it, it goes up so slowly there. That is part of the TCP Vegas, it is a standard thing. And congestion avoidance phase is entered by measuring the throughput uh, reduction of the throughput. Uh, throughput increase in normally throughput go on increasing. So, when it tapers, uh, then it understands instead of earlier uh, standard TCP that is it exceeds CWND exceeds the SS threshold, uh, that, that is what is the uh, congestion avoidance phase. In this case, the the throughput is tapering. Mm. So, CWND equals the bandwidth delay product of the network. Mm. It, it tries to maintain always, and, and uh, then in congestion avoidance phase, uh, continuously it measures the achieved throughput and it adjusts the CWND accordingly. We are not going to detail how how it is adjusted. Mm, those who are interested, they can read that uh, RFCs, corresponding RFCs, and I uh, and the standards uh, which are available from the Internet Task Force. Congestion control is invoked by sending uh, host in response to a loss when RTU expires and when the explicit congestion notification is received from the destination host. This is also existing in the standard TCP. So, there is a special notification when the uh, layer uh, uh, the in between router uh, routers they understand that there is a congestion is happening. They try to send this notification to the destination saying that congestion uh, expli uh, this congestion is expected. Mm. So, this is host accordingly. So, the congestion control is invoked based on these two issues and then there is a source quench uh, notification received from the intermediate router. Uh, this mechanism is received faster uh, than ECN from the destination and is preferred in a long delay link. Uh, the difference I will just try to mention that in between router 
when it understands that there is a congestion is uh, going to happen, uh, ECN it sends to the destination and then destination will send in its acknowledgement that congestion ECN has come. So, sender will take certain action that is a longer process and uh, uh, if this router sends source quench notification uh, sends back to the sender, uh, then this mechanism is received faster than is seen um, then uh, in, a, in a long delay link it is it's advantageous. So, satellite uh, data links normally carry heavy traffic in one direction. So, that is about congestion uh, uh, thing and different uh, types of uh, error sources uh, detection and corresponding mitigation technique what we talk. Now, we are getting into the another issue in the satellite channel which is asymmetric channel. Uh, satellite data links are normally carry heavy traffic in one direction and uh, other direction uh, carry normally acts like say it's a um, mm, say a, a, a large volume of data uh, is monitored and uh, uh, say a radar data or um, a, 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 a moon surface data is collected which is a high volume data is sent in one direction the other direction will only ACK. So, other direction carry only ACK. Now, ACK is very so small amount it is only header. So, this reverse link is normally put along with the telemetry and telecom which is a very low bandwidth link. So, in one side the heavy volume of data is coming other side the ACK is going which goes along with telemetry telecom link which is we have seen earlier it is already 10 kilobits per second that type of link low bandwidth. In case of large data file transmission the reverse link may overrun with ACK because large files are coming with segment side. So, each segment will be sending ACK. So, now the ACK will be more than telemetry telecom. <laughs> so, this may overrun. So, that could be a problem. So, reduce large amount of ACK transmission <laughs> we have to reduce that all packets that are not ACT uh, all packets are not ACT instead only nth packet is ACT. So, it is well some some sort of a delayed ACK mechanism. Uh, so, I reduce the volume of ACK uh, to accommodate them in the reverse link which is telemetry telecom link which is a low bandwidth. This is uh, the manage this is how it is managed in the asymmetric channel in the space uh, link. Now, let us let us see the other thing which is uh, link capacity it is a limited link capacity we know the power uh, uh, available at the satellite probe is uh, limited. So, accordingly to get the proper C by n uh, the link capacity uh, the bandwidth has to be reduced. Satellite channels are power limited and have relatively less bandwidth compared to the uh, terrestrial channel we have we, we know this. So, here the since bandwidth is less bit efficiency is very important we should not send the bits which are not uh, not relevant or not important for that particular link. Hmm. So, now you see TCP had a header of 20 bytes hmm, normal header it is not extended header uh, 20 bytes for small data uh, when the data volume is small compared to the header when the header is much larger then the channel capacity is unnecessarily absorbed uh, or consumed by the uh, header itself and uh, all the 20 bytes may not be useful. Mm. So, two mechanisms are uh, proposed in this uh, to improve the performance mm. this is specifically for the space uh, uh, data link. One is called header compression and another is called selective negative acknowledgement. Okay. Let us let us uh, look at these uh, two uh, techniques briefly. Header compression. Now there is a standard header compression which is available in the TCP, uh, which is actually uh, a, a, a some sort of a delta function. That is, uh, whatever earlier uh, header was there and the new header, the difference of these two. And they're very simple, but that is uh, the standard. But in this case, they are not doing that the satellite based TCP header compression is different than the conventional TCP header compression which is uh, also available as standard that is based on differential header transmission mm, it is not that. There are problems so we need not discuss into show so many details uh, what is proposed that is what we will discuss. Satellite based header compression summarizes the static information and omits the information that is not relevant for the present connection. Mm. Uh, I, I briefly uh, just mentioned that is instead of source address and destination address which are quite uh, long in terms of they, they give certain identifier port identifier. 
source port and destination port address are very long, so many bits are there. So, instead they use unique some port identifier for each uh, uh, fragmented uh, each uh, segments uh, as long as the connection is there that port identifier uh, identifies uh, clearly. So, that could be much smaller in length unique identifier or in the uh, like TCP flags mm, there all flags may not be used. Uh, so, those things can be. So, the static informations which are not uh, uh, dynamically changing during the connection uh, that can be reduced. So, this way about 50 percent of the header compression can be achieved. Mm. So, uh, this this is uh, the technique which is slightly away from the uh, standard header compression uh, proposed by IETF that is internet engineering task force it is slightly different than that, but uh, it is much more reliable it has been found experimented and proposed uh, and accepted by the CCSDS and roughly about 50 percent header compression they have achieved. The other technique is uh, selective NAC SNAC. Mm. Now, SNAC is uh, not in the standard uh, TCP protocol. In the TCP protocol, there is a uh, NAC, only NAC, uh, but which is not used as a standard, but which is already proposed, mm, and selective ACK, which is uh, already existing and uh, proposed as well as uh, taken as a standard TCP. Now this is uh, slightly different than these two. This is uh, specially used only for space environment TCP. Uh, there is a negative acknowledgement and uh, uh, this is a negative acknowledgement and request for retransmission. Uh, normally, you if you remember the TCP says acknowledgement which is positive acknowledgement and if you do not get a positive acknowledgement within certain time, then you retransmit. So, not receive of positive acknowledgement is uh, treated as a loss of data. In this case, receiver says that clearly says that this is not received. So, it is a negative acknowledgement. So, there is a hole uh, uh, in my uh, there, or there is a gap in my receive buffer and that gap is identified with the start of the gap from the beginning there is a offset of that and the length of the gap like that there may be many gaps. So, only those gap information is passed on from his receive buffer and those are treated as a selective because they are selecting the gaps and it is a negative acknowledgement that I do not have this it is a gap. Hmm. So, this, this is how the technique works. So, it requests for retransmission. Uh, so, SNAC identifies the MSS sequences that are not received or gaps created in the received MS sequence. Okay. So, multiple segment uh, negative acknowledgement can be sent in a single packet, but it all depends that uh, the uh, a uh, snack packet is uh, limited by its size with even with extension. So, if there are much more than uh, uh, the uh, what it can accommodate much more gaps are there. So, there will be subsequent NACs will be sent. Uh, it specified the offset from the last ACK offset in terms of number of bytes mm. uh, last ACK segment what was when positive ACK segment and the length of that gap in bytes of the segment that is missing in the receive buffer. Mm. Now, uh, the data receiver actually scans the receive buffer uh, to find out uh, the sequence in uh, uh, to find out the out of uh, uh, sequence queue and the receiver uh, forms that uh, SNAC option and there is a specific uh, control uh, field uh, which says that this is a SNAC and corresponding fields it uh, sent and uh, along with the normal outgoing X segment it sends that these are the areas which I have not received. You understand this, this that is that he has received something and is sending ACK. Earlier uh, TCP standard says that it can send ACK only up to what he has received in order properly. In this case he sends he has received some segment and he sending ACK for that segment and even if there are certain gaps he will send those gap information. Earlier, he would not have sent the ACK for this, he would have sent the ACK for the up to last one, which is ordered and sequence received. And if there are gaps, he will send duplicate ACKs of that. Instead of duplicate ACK of the previous one, he sends the ACK of the correct one received and in between which are not received, he sends. So, that is SNAC. So, SNAC uh, goes along with the outgoing uh, ACK segment. And upon receipt of the SNAC, the sender immediately retransmits all the missing segments as identified by the SNAC option. 
uh, that is the center size. So, now he knows that uh, these are the, uh, though it is in his uh, transmit buffer uh, sequentially they are put, but he knows now in which sequence are missing. So, he takes out and puts into his uh, a new queue and that it is not a standard sliding window arrangement, uh, what our earlier uh, TCP we have discussed. Uh, it forms a new queue and sends this or the missing uh, segments. Mm. And of course, he tries to fill up the network capacity of that. So, the other techniques which uh, are used in this uh, communication uh, are of course, and that uh, the there is a time stamp option uh, that is the RTT has to be estimated uh, accurately. So, for that each uh, along with the each segment it gives us time stamp. Normal TCP it uh, sends a time stamp at the beginning of the connection um, establishment. And it sends a time stamp and that goes through, through different router to the destination and uh, receiver sends it back. So, the sender finds out the difference of the transmit time and receive time of the connection initiation packet and he estimates that okay, this is my total delay expected and then he does certain algorithm over that and try to find out what should be the expected RTT and what should be his RTO for a normal uh, uh, packet. But in this case for every packet is sending a timestamp for each segment and for every packet it knows uh, what is happen happening to the delay because the satellite is uh, moving the probes uh, are moving or maybe uh, on the ground there is a certain movement. So, because of that delays will be varying. So, therefore, the accurate estimation of the RTT continuously is uh, very important. So, the, that is uh, that, that is one of the uh, thing which is done and also we have talked about the window scaling option which enables the window which is uh, larger than 64 kilobyte size. Mm, then uh, uh, in that case the we have given example uh, with the example we have seen that window scaling option which is required uh, that when RTT is much much larger. So, these are the uh, various uh, techniques we have uh, talked and uh, uh, the main thing it is not available always in the textbook. So, therefore, those who are very much interested uh, to know I would suggest uh, this way of the looking at the references. Um, though I have listed four of them there are many. Uh, so, the basic starters uh, I would suggest that take the reference number 3 which is uh, the TCP IP uh, tutorial uh, and technical overview it is slightly slightly older uh, issue, but you will know what is uh, generally what is a uh, and particularly chapter uh, chapters or you do not have to read the whole thing uh, because we are looking for the uh, satellite communication part. So, read that uh, chapter which is uh, there on internet protocol that IP and the read the chapter which is the on the TCP protocol transport uh, control protocol. Uh, and then uh, you should also read there is a RFC request for uh, th these are available um, in the internet and that is internet engineering task force they issue request for comment uh, with sub numbers and various issues they discuss on that. Some of them are simply informational some of them are standards. So, this is a standard uh, this is informational thing um, where the researches are going on slightly older um, this is, uh, but there you will know uh, that what are the issues uh, the TCP uh, people they were uh, engineering task force were working. So, enhancing TCP over satellite channel uh, this gives you certain overview of the problems what are faced initially uh, and the solution they were suggesting those days but that is not uh, what fully implemented uh, in what we discussed uh, today. That is available in the uh, in the, the first reference. Uh, this is a paper uh, which is uh, worked out in detail based on uh, though it is 1997, but based on those days so whatever TCP standard protocols are uh, were available I and mean now more or less that is what is running. Mm, so, uh, they, uh, what we discussed today is mostly from this paper and uh, of course, they talk in much more detail I have given you only a very brief tip of the iceberg top, top thing and based on their recommendation the reference first their com recommendation this uh, the fourth one which is the uh, standards body CCSDS which has accepted and uh, now uh, all the almost all the space agencies they are uh, following this uh, 
uh, uh, transport protocol standard, also they have IP protocol standard, many other things are there in CCSDS. So, you can go through the CCSDS uh, site also. So, with this, uh, we, uh, we stop at the this uh, discussion on the higher layer impact on the higher layer because of the physical layer and certain mitigation techniques which are proposed and which are being used right now. Thank you very much for your attention.